Yo, what's good, Knicks Nation? Finally, we're back on a win. We're back on this winning ways. Let's go. Let's get into this. The New York Knicks face the Philadelphia 76ers tonight in the final matchup of their mini series in Madison Square Garden. New York was looking to bounce back after losing in a woeful way. What was scoring game in the league this season? They were looking to bounce back, and that they did. From the jump of this game, New York was out in the lead and never looked back. Philly never had a chance to gain a lead at all in this game. Why? Because New York put on a scoring clinic and they put the clamps on. They made sure that nobody could come out here and show them the love that Kelly Oubre wanted. Isn't that right, bro? So anyway, you had Jalen Brunson going off tonight. You had Josh Hart getting a triple-double. My man had 20 points, 19 rebounds, 10 assists. You had the OG and an OB effect. Man was just versatile on defense as always, and he was doing everything that we're accustomed to seeing him doing, whether it be cutting, knocking down threes, whatever it may be. And you saw that the, the Knicks as a whole were able to take that next step up. So you know what we got to do now, right? After the Knicks win 106-79, to holding the Sixers under 80 points again. We got to take your calls. We got to talk about it in post game live. Welcome. I'm your host, Alex Terrace, aka the Tratocaster. With me on the other side is my guy, CK2K. You already know who he is. Make sure to call in by the Discord tonight. That's the only way we're taking calls. So make sure to download the app, TM, if you can. Please put the link in the chat and make sure to support our sponsors, Underdog Fantasy, Manscaped, and Ginger Hales. All right. So let's get into this and let's discuss this like a family. CK, my guy, how you feeling, man? How you feeling about this game? Feeling great, man. Uh, like you said, much needed, especially after Sunday. Uh, I, I got a new name for Philly, man. They're the Philadelphia 79ers because uh, that's all they can score in the garden. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know, unfortunately, it was in a win on Sunday. But tonight, you know, 79 just wasn't enough. You know what I'm talking mm. about? So, you know, shout out to Kelly Oubre and the 79ers over there because, uh, yeah, we moving forward. We moving forward. Yeah, man, we're moving forward. Knicks came out here strong, and of course, it was headlined by none other than OG and an OB on his <clears> return. <throat> CK, this guy comes back off of getting surgery on his elbow to remove, I, I think it was a floating bone, right? And this guy yeah. comes out here, gets you 14 points six on 6 of 11 shooting. Nick knocks down 2 of 5 from threes, gets you 4 rebounds, 2 assists, 1 steal, but the stat line doesn't do it justice. The stat line does not do what he did tonight justice because when you just watch him on defense, man, this is where you got to in the games and not box score watch. When you watch him on defense, versatility is how I describe his game. This man was covering everybody, didn't matter if it was on the perimeter, in the paint, whatnot, and he was doing everything you needed to do on defense as well as offense because this guy was not only knocking down shots, right? He was creating for himself. He was cutting, getting these open passes, and then look, he looked fine, CK. He looked fine. He's making dunks. You know, yeah. every time he's going up there, you're worried that, you know, you're worried about that, that elbow, but this man yeah. is still, still making it seem like it's all good and breezy easy out there. So, yeah. OG man on his return, Knicks get back in that winning column. What were your yeah. thoughts about his game tonight? Yeah, I, I think there's the concern that a lot of us have. We saw the the heavy ice on the the elbow, but we we knew that he was going to be coming back at like 75, 80 percent. He's still playing his first game back from the surgery. He did come back from a surgery. He is medically cleared. He's good to play. The ice, uh, we got to let that slide. We'll be okay. But other than that, like you said, man, the way that he spun into that dunk in the um, third quarter, I'm not concerned. He's doing just fine. I also loved seeing the mid-range jumper make a reappearance because that was one of my favorite uh, newfound tricks from OG Ananobi since he's donned the Knicks jersey because uh, we didn't see much of that in Toronto. Um, and we saw right before the injury, he was doing a lot of that. Um, so we got a little bit of a taste of that. So that's not going anywhere because I love that aspect of his game. But more than that is the defense. It just it, it just opened up for everybody. And just him being on the floor, I'm out there watching uh, B Bogdanovich and, and Dante mm -hmm. over there sliding their feet, playing crazy defense and now getting stops. Uh, just his impact is, is incredible. So happy for him to be back. Uh, the team looks better with them there and, you know, better late than never, because if I had to watch another 73 to 79 game against the 79ers, I wouldn't have been happy. And OG was a big part of today's dog. <laughs> the 79ers. Yo, That's the name watching the night, OG yo. back on the court, man, I, I got to ask you, do you think that this, it, it's just noticeable, right? How this team as a whole takes a step forward and we don't even have Randall back. We don't have Mitchell Robinson yeah. back. Like, Isaiah Hartenstein, you can still, like, he's looking good. Like, it looks like yeah. he's getting back to the swing of things. But you still you see, like, there's some instances where he's worried about his Achilles. But even with all of that, 
How much of a leap do you see this team taking moving forward with OG back? Or is it just because we're playing a depleted 76ers team? No, uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not using that excuse anymore because we depleted too. Even with OG coming back into the rotation, we are still very much depleted. Missing guys like Mitchell Robinson, All Star Julius Randle. Don't talk to me about us not being depleted. Yes, Julius, uh, uh, Joel Embiid is a big piece of the Philadelphia 76ers, but they still got Tobias over there, who uh, we, was, we were hearing was having a good season this year before the injury. This name, that name. So I, I, the depleted stuff. I'm still taking that badge over here because we still got to get our pieces back before the Infinity Gauntlet is ready to go. Um, mm. But for the main part to your question, um, yeah, no, it, it, we need we need games like this. And um, I think one of the the good things, we were 8-10 and 10 since January 27th when we lost OG Ananobi, which isn't great, but it's not terrible either because we were able to win some big games after sliding from some other big games during that stretch of games. So now you're seeing OG come back and you're instantly seeing what we've been missing that perimeter defense. We're seeing that he can help us with an extra 15 to possibly 17, maybe on some good nights in the 20s from OG Ananobi, something that we didn't have before. And my favorite aspect is now if OG is making that corner three or if OG is making any shot, Jalen Brunson is about to get a little bit more open. And also tonight, <laughs> if you're having Josh Hart continue to play aggressive as he's playing, Brunson's going to keep getting a little a bit more open and maybe he won't be the most double team player in the NBA anymore so there's so many aspects to just having OG Ananobi back so it, it can't go anywhere but up from now and hopefully the Knicks ride that high and not get too complacent knowing that we just got one of our guys back we still got to play with that we're down and out mentality and we're going to make sure we prove everybody wrong I think we'll be fine no doubt about it I agree with you wholeheartedly I got another question for you though were you expecting Josh Hart to still be in the starting rotation? Part of me felt like that Tom Thibodeau, and it's nothing against Josh Hart because obviously uh, he played. Right. Like, no, 100%. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't bother yeah. me either yeah. way who he's, who he's starting with. To me, I was I was expecting Precious to be out there just because Tom Thibodeau always talks about, you know, having height, versatility. Precious hmm. has been giving you that. Um, but it looks like after tonight, Tom Thibodeau likes Precious at that back of five spot mm. uh, just to relieve Hartenstein. It doesn't I don't know what that means about Jericho Sims, his trust in Jericho Sims. But, you know, you start seeing, uh, well, not start seeing, but you saw Brunson, Dante, Hart, uh, OG, and then Hartenstein out there. Is it because of Jericho Sims? Is it because that you have... The, the Villanova trio, and you trust their chemistry right now. You don't want to break that up. Uh, do you rather have OG at the four because he's a better defender than Precious? What are your thoughts about that lineup choice that Tom Thibodeau made today? Uh, first things first, I made this joke. JD tweeted asking what we thought the lineup was going to be. And yeah, I made yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what, it's, it's two different questions, right? You know, mm -hmm. you would ask the general public, like, what we think the starting lineup is going to be, or what do we think Tom Thibodeau is going to go with, and exactly what he went with is what I expected Tom Thibodeau to go with. Because, look, man, Josh Hart, jokes aside, and like you said, it has nothing to do with Josh Hart. It's just you, everything you mentioned. You're expecting that you would um continue to go with the height, have Hart be a part of the second lineup. He can still have his crazy amount of minutes. Nothing changes on that front. And to be honest with you, when I found, I found out the starting lineup, I was worried. I'm like, okay, how does this affect Precious' his play? Because he's been great. And now we're finally seeing him go back to the bench, which ultimately is going to be his role when Randall comes back. How is he going to respond? And Precious went out there and said, I'm going to be the exact same dude. Like, don't worry about me. My minutes might go down a, a, a little bit, but I'm still going to give you the same effort. So I was happy with it. And Josh Hart did a good job with it, too, because, you know, OG Ananobi, <laughs> you know, Tobias Harris was in prison. Like, mind you, Tobias Harris didn't really need that much help to be in purgatory, but when you have OG Ananobi out there just jumping from Ubre to, to Tobias, and it, it was it most likely was the right move from Tom Thibodeau, especially with this lineup. Um, so, I, I was fine with it. Uh, did, did I expect it? Yes. Um, was I with <laughs> you where I wanted it to be precious? Of course, because I just want to see precious continue to shine. But uh, Tom Thibodeau did exactly what I expected him to do, and he was right. He made the right call because it ended up working out really well for us defensively, and Josh Hart went out there and got his second triple-double of the season. So it all made sense. It all worked out. No doubt. It all worked out. Shout out to Tibbs for making uh, the good call tonight. And, yeah. you know, the way I look at it as is that you still have, especially the way Josh Hart's playing, if you're going to have this level of offense from him, uh, just 20 points tonight, then you're not really losing anything. You're still – you're adding mm -hmm. defensively, right? And you're adding – uh, you're adding more offensively just because Precious, even though the last few games he's shot the three ball better, you can argue that Hart is a better three-point shooter 
more reliable, I guess, even though he went one for six tonight, but more of a threat from the guard position to put up threes. Um, not necessarily something that you want pressure to do, be putting up threes, but from that, you still keep the defensive intensity with all those guys out there from Dante, who's good at jumping the passing lanes. You have OG, who's just a versatile defender. Josh Hart, you know, you're going to get constant grit effort. He could play that free safety role. And then Hartenstein is a solid rim protector as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I think for Tom Thibodeau, you still keep that. And then offensively, we saw tonight, guys like Hart, OG, guys who can continuously cut, as well as Dante, man. Even Brunson, man. Brunson was getting some cuts, was cutting as well. Like with all of that, I think it just plays out well offensively and defensively, and you don't miss a beat. So it was a good call by Tom Thibodeau. Either he gave way, Hart the triple double. Uh, yeah, Brunson triple -double, cut man. is the reason why uh, Hart got the triple double. So yeah, Brunson was doing it too. You're right. You're right. No yeah. doubt. So let's talk about the guy Josh Hart then, right? Because Josh mm. Hart getting that triple double, twenty points, nineteen rebounds, eighteen of those were defensive, and ten assists. Went eight to sixteen from the field today. Josh Hart just on one. Not a big fan of the plus minus stat, but he got a plus thirty two tonight. <laughs> Josh Hart doing the damn thing tonight. Helping the New York Knicks. Man gets a standing ovation, and rightfully so. Josh Hart, fourth. Fourth triple-double this season, CK. Pretty, pretty sure that it is his fourth career-wise. All four of them coming in this season alone. Kudos to Josh Hart, man. He's been doing yeah. the damn thing. Yeah, I, I said two. My fault. I, I meant fourth. I, I meant to say two recent because he had no one the other week. But yeah, no, 100%. Uh, like, like we were saying, like he proved Tibbs right. Um, the spacing made sense for everybody. Um, any worries we had about it not working with him, uh, Brunson, OG in the same lineup, that's out the window because everyone were in their space, got in their spaces and defensively it just was the best uh, lineup. Uh, Josh Hart looked good. Like it, This is what we want. I think this is the guy we want to see more consistently. I mean, we're getting back to April. We're right around the corner from April, and it's in everybody's head that final moment in Miami. So I think that's where the worries come when it comes to Josh Hart. And if Josh Hart is doing this, which he's been, I'm going to give him his flowers for the last two weeks when we were injured and we were down and out. For the mo most part in those two weeks, Hart has been this version. He's been aggressive. He hasn't been turning down shots, attacking the paint when everybody else is just settling for threes. This is what we want to see, Mr. Hart, Mr. You know, Mr. Uh, uh, Roommates Podcast. Like, this is what we want to see from you because we all know that you can do it. You have this ability to get the triple doubles like this. And if it's not a triple double on a nightly basis, which I know it's not going to happen, for the most part, you're going to get your shot because we want to see you get that shot. You're one of the strongest guys, if not the strongest guy on this uh, team that's not named Julius Randle. And you should be able to bully guys in the paint and get those kind of buckets around the rim like he did tonight. And I think that's just the big frustration with a lot of folks, myself included, because we know that this guy can be here on a consistent basis. Maybe not triple doubles, but we know that we can get this version of Josh Hart. And if we do, man, when we're fully healthy and we have Josh Hart doing this kind of stuff, adding this element to this team... Come on, man. So big shot for him. And like you said, four triple doubles all in his career, all in the Knicks uniform. Come on, man. Come Yo, on, man. Like, let's let's be real. Let's go. After starting off the season rocky, complaining about, you know, lack of minutes, not getting an offensive rhythm, not mm. having too many minutes. By the way, he said, once OG comes back, my minutes will reduce from not having to play 40 plus minutes per night. And it's true. It did reduce. Yeah. He did not play yeah. 40 minutes tonight. He only played 39. So there you go, Josh Hart. You got 39 <laughs> minutes tonight. Tom Thibodeau gave you a favor. Um, <laughs> what's funny enough is that Tibbs said uh, in the presser uh, that Josh Hart was complaining that Tibbs took him out too early so he couldn't get couldn't get that 20th rebound to get a 20-20-10, which, yeah. you know, that would have been, been sick, man. That would have been sick for Josh I Hart. I wanted it, though. Yeah. The last 10 games for Josh Hart, CK, he's been averaging 43 minutes. This doesn't include tonight. He's been averaging 43 minutes. He's averaging 16 points, shooting 45% from the field, shooting 37% from downtown. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, free throws got to take a step up, Josh. All right. You're, you're shooting 61%. We can't be having that. On, on three attempts per game, we can't be having that. But he's averaging 12 rebounds and six assists. Josh Hart has been putting in that work, man, with everybody yeah. being down. And, you know, even when you listen to that roommate's podcast and how Brunson and him and Dante are all talking how Josh Hart likes to just complain just to, you know, let it off the chest. Sometimes people just vent, man, not being necessarily like, yes, is it bothering them? But, yeah, sure, maybe a little bit, but he'll go out there and still do the, his job, man. Anything that Tibbs or his teammates ask of him, he goes out there and he does that. And you got to give, you got to tip your cap, man, because for a yeah. guy who was struggling to begin the season, plus, by the way, playing on an injured knee that he's managing on this season, let's keep that in mind. He's managing an, a, a sore knee, right? 
and still playing 40 plus minutes a night, 39 tonight, Josh Hart has definitely made his money worth just by the amount of production we've been given with he's been giving since this all the injuries for this team. You would never know. You would never know he had that issue. Never know, man. He's You'll out there like know. still attacking like a one man fast break, man. He's a one yeah. band band man out there yeah. in the fast break. Even when he's curling and cutting, getting downhill, man. The physicality is as you said, absolutely true for Josh Hart. Absolutely true. Um, let's hope that he can keep up his three point shooting, man, because he's he's been doing a good job, man. That's what we yeah. need. From him. Like I said, as long as he's shooting them, Alex, I'm happy. Because the, the amount of times in the past we've seen this guy turn down wide open threes irritated me. And I'm glad he's shooting them now. So now let's get that percentage up. But 37, though, in the last – I mean, come on, man. That's, that's not terrible. Yeah, that's not no, terrible. Not at all. It's not the that's 50% not terrible. like last season, but, you know. Right, 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 right. You know, a little, little you know bit I mean? of, you know, right. back to life, back to reality kind of moment. It's all good. It's all good. I'll take 37. Yeah, back to life, back to reality. <laughs> CK, last thing, man. Before we start getting phone calls, yeah. this Knicks offense, you buying it with OG back? You buying it moving forward, even without Randall? You think this is possible to do against other teams? Uh, win by 30 points or just play as fluid as we did tonight? Because that's a little we did tonight. No, 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 okay. not 30. Not 30. That's, that's, that's <laughs> okay. a lot. To I was going to say, I'm like, I don't want to be the bear of bad new, but uh, not every team going to be the 79ers. Uh, because, no, look, man, <laughs> we're going out for a West Coast trip, right? You know, we yes. got the Portland Trailblazers, which, yes. by the way, I feel like we should be able to beat them by like 40, like we did last time, even oh. with just OG, no, jo no Julius Randle. Um, I feel like we should be able to do that. But you're going to have the Sacramento Kings. You're going to have the Golden State Warriors. You're going to have the Denver Nuggets. So those are teams that you actually have to account for and be and like be worried about in my like you still got to guard you got to play against Steph Curry and that Warriors team who yeah. you know have found a groove been up and down re recently but have found a groove Denver you already know what it is the reigning champs Sacramento mm -hmm. they play There's just there. like the Pacers man as, as yep. a fast paced track meet team yep. uh, how do you feel about this Knicks offense moving forward on this West Coast trip. Oh, man, I don't mean to take away from the offense, but I feel like the offense goes as far as the defense goes. I think the defense is what's going to dictate our offense in this uh, stretch of games because you mentioned two teams that I'm really concerned about, um, but I do believe we can win, and that is Denver and Sacramento. Sacramento, great uh, comparison to Indiana because that that's exactly how they play. They play that fast-paced style, but if we're able to do what we showed that we could do with Indiana and slow them down, I think that's where our offense then best comes to play is when we're able to stop the other team and frustrate the other team defensively, we're able to take advantage and then you get a, a, a doubly contested DiVincenzo deep three and then the other team's like, how did, what's going on? Or you get a Jalen Brunson step back, uh, I'm not done yet, uh, up, down, spin, move, layup, like all those kind of things. I think that that becomes more frustrating when it's coming off of a steal or coming off of a great defensive stop on the other side. So, um, yeah, I, I do believe in the offense, but like I said, the offense is strictly uh, dictated by the defense with this team and um like i mentioned earlier it also helps that we have og in the lineup to give us 15 points per game and to take a little bit of the eyes off of brunson when we go to these point guard heavy teams and these uh yeah these guard heavy teams portland with anthony simons uh you know steph curry over there we know that's going to be the matchup uh you, you know darren fox is pissed off that he's not an all-star uh we, we don't have to talk about jamal murray but you know he's there so all these are point guard driven teams and you know we're going to have a good time with those matchups because we got some help on our side defensively on the perimeter with none other than og and Anobi. so worried i am not uh, but i definitely believe our offense is dictated by our defense interesting i'm gonna yes. have to go the other way yeah i think i think it's fine like i don't like i understand what you're saying like defense leads to offense for this knicks team but i still think mm. that it's fine even with even when we didn't have all these injuries it just mm -hmm. seems so foolish to me just the way that especially with Hartenstein at the five, the way he can just okay. find guys cutting. Uh, I just think that's, and he also can give you the floater. He's good at, you know, with the layups and just the paint, being in the dunk, being in the dunker spot. I just feel mm -hmm. like with him adding that value, it can just open up everything else for this Knicks. I, I like, I get the impact that you're saying about their defense. Like, yeah, you know, you get a stop, go out there and transition. You potentially get a steal, go out there and transition. But even on a game like tonight, uh, is this my okay? Yeah, this is the right guy. You know, they only had four steals tonight. The Knicks only had four steals. So yeah, it like when I look at the turnover battle, like the Knicks still have more turnovers than the Sixers. They the Sixers had eight. Knicks had twelve. But what did what did the Seventy Sixers shoot from the field? 
I, I get you. No, I get, I get, I get, that's what I'm saying. I get what you're saying. Like defensively, like they shot 20 the from downtown. They shot 40%. They shot 37% from the field. But I just like, that's, these are one also unrealistic numbers. That's so like to imagine like the Knicks Very true. Very true. To, keep, to keep up with. But I think yeah. offensively, just because if you get somebody like OG who can knock down the shot, like you said earlier, you can open up shots for Brunson where he's not going to be his double team as much on the perimeter. So I just think offensively, I don't like could it be di could it be predicated by the defense for sure, but I still think even from the jump, we're gonna still have some good offense just from this Knicks team. But hey, we'll see, man. We'll see what happens on this West Coast yeah. trip. I'm like you yeah. though; I'm pretty confident. But I want to know what yeah, the, I, feel good. I, wanna I, feel good. I want to know what the listeners think. I want to know what everyone out in Knicks Nation thinks. So you know what you got to do uh, right first. First and foremost, salute to Knicks Nation. Thank you for all for tuning in right now for Knicks Knicks Fan TV post game live. All right, make sure you hit that thumbs up button for your boys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Shout out to all of Knicks Nation. Shout out to all the franchise channel members right now. I see First Lady Sports in here. Hey. Mill, I see you in here. Uh, hey. He's Noriega. Shout out to you. Hey. Ooh, we, got, we got TM in here. I see all you guys. I see Junior Caroma as well. I see JJ in here too. All yes, right, sir. make sure you hit that thumbs up button for your boys. Come on now. And then, look. Make sure to download the app Discord so you can get your calls in tonight. We're going to go to the lines and get some takes right now. So first and foremost, let's go to Way Too Mellow on the line. Way Too Mellow. What's going on? <laughs> Way Too Mellow, are you there? It's too Mellow to talk. Way Too Mellow. Going once. Going twice. All right. I'm going to come back to you. Let's That's go to... Mellow. Let's go to Carlo. Carlo, are you there right now? Hello. Yo, Hi. Carlo, what's going on, man? Uh, yeah, kamusta mga kumpare at pamilya ko sa KFTV? Uh, first of all, shout out to Tim Thomas. Thank you, KFTV, for bringing him in the show. Uh, and it's hard. It's a hard fact that we should not have traded him to the Bulls in exchange for Eddie Curry. Uh, mm -hmm. That turned out and picks that turned out to be Joe Kim Noah in LA. So anyway. <laughs> Back to the game, uh, monster performance by the Knicks, and all it took is the return of OG. We are 13-2 and two with him, I believe, uh, with him and the lineup. Uh, any team around the league, if you have a defensive anchor like OG and uh, someone who initiates the defensive scheme, it's going to be infectious for the entire team. Uh, they're going to perform well, as, as we saw in Josh Hart's uh, performance, as, as well as in Precious. I said it before, Josh Hart is our heart and soul. He reminds me of uh, young Charles Barkley. The numbers that he had in this game exceeds that. Mm. Uh, it could have been sweeter if we held the 79ers below 74 points as a complete revenge game. And to the Sixers, you can run, but you can't hide. I want them in the first round. Mm. Uh, however, uh, I'm still desperate to see Julius back, and the reason for that is he will unlock Alec, Alec Burks and Bogey. I might get tomatoes for this, but I want Julius to come back to action at least five games before the playoffs, and I'm recommending him to play for the second unit with Alec and Bogey. Mm -hmm. Julius, and the reason for that is Julius might not receive double teams because they're expecting that he doesn't have that bully ball mentality yet. Mm -hmm. But uh, once you get back to it, Burks and Bogey are waiting for the corner three. So that's all I have to say. Thank you for appreciate you, time. Carlo. Appreciate you call for calling in, Carlo. Calling in, saying that have Randall when he comes back play with the second unit with the last five games to help out mm -hmm. Bogdanovich and CP's guy Alec Burks. So I was going to say I only had one complaint with his take. I thought he yeah. was great with this take, but my one complaint was that he mentioned that he played with Bogey and Burks. I just like I, I, I just don't see that happening. I think you need to get Randall yeah, back. I don't see Burks being in the rotation then either. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, you don't see them in the rotation at all. Woo! When we're fully healthy, someone's got to go. Tim's don't run a ten man rotation. Who's gonna be that tenth man out? CK, who's your ten man? Who's your? Oh, no, I was about to say ten man. Who's your nine man rotation? <laughs> that's the question you want me to ask you the question i asked jd who's mine or who do i think tibbs is gonna go with well obviously i'm asking you because i want you to tell me who you <laughs> think right, tibbs right, is gonna right, go right. with all right all right so i think okay to, the, to that question I, I, okay i think it's gonna be our, our normal five completely healthy it's gonna be because this is where it gets cra crazy and you you mentioned it earlier with jericho sims and not not getting minutes and i don't think it was his fault because jericho was playing well but at the same time 
someone got to go, and unfortunately, Jericho got cut. So we got if we're completely healthy, we got Brunson. Okay, we got. I, well, I'm keeping Devo out there. OG, Randall, and Mitch. Okay, so now things have to get crazy. You keeping Isaiah Hartenstein? You keeping Josh Hart? Right now, this is where it gets. This is where it gets uh, shaky. All right, I would assume and hope that he's going to continue to go with Precious Achua with a much more limited role. And then this is where I don't know what happens next because where is Boyan fit? Where does uh, Deuce fit? Where is Alec Burks fit? I could even be crazy about putting Precious in there. Precious might get the boot for Boyan Bogdanovich. So this is what I'm saying. So it's like, I, I would be surprised if he goes with both of them. I know he's in love with um, Alec Burks probably a little bit more than CP is. But, you know, there's a world where Precious Achua might be out of rotation and Boyan gets that love and hopefully do stays there and that's it. And then we got poor uh, Precious who's been balling out. We got poor Alec Burks who, you know, CP is going to be upset to not see play sitting on the far end of the bench. And then my boy, Shea Milton, who just came on this roller coaster ride, just Here hanging out with, the, with them uh, sitting now. So I think the four guys on the bench, it's going to be uh, Isaiah Hardenstein, Boron Bogdanovich, um, um, Deuce McBride, and Josh Hart. I think those are the four guys he goes with. And unfortunately, Precious is going to become situational depending on who we see in the playoffs. Is that what I want, Alex? You know, the answer is no. But what is that's what I think Tibbs is going to go with. I think he unfortunately mm -hmm. goes Boyan over uh precious. precious wow yeah okay and you put mitch back in the starting rotation or you're leaving hard i did starting? Wow. I, i'm just i'm saying completely healthy sake of the argument i'm putting mitch in the starting lineup yes interesting see i'm yep. gonna go with hartenstein still at the starting spot just because i don't think mitchell robinson you know he's you know he's still on depends uh, when it comes back really doing contact right now he's jogging and doing everything else right but yeah. he's not yeah. he's not taking contact right now and even if he came back it seems like the way it's looking he's would return april beginning of april right before the playoffs i don't know if you wanted mm -hmm. to shake up that much of the starting rotation when everything was clicking with hartenstein out there mm -hmm. that's where i would just say i think hartenstein stays in that starting rotation and then i think yeah mitch come off the bench and then let him work his way back up because we don't know what conditioning he'll be in we don't yeah. know physically if he's ready to just get back in the post like i, I don't know man i don't know or I don't know if Mitch will be ready for all that. So I don't think you tinker too much with that starting rotation. Also, offensively, mm -hmm. I think the one thing that we saw last year in the postseason is that we need more offense. Like, we got that now. That's why Einstein. I think you would go to Bogdanovich. That's, that's Which, why I think you would, you would go that route on the bench. I hear you. I hear you. I don't doubt that. I think when – so for me, the starting rotation would be with Hartenstein just because of cutting okay. lines. Like no, I get block. you. I hear that. I hear that. Bench, you're going to put Mitch. You know Josh Hart's going to be on the bench. That's one-two sure. right there. First one, um, yeah. I think McBride's going to be in that rotation too, man. I, I don't think so. he, I don't think he's getting taken out. I mean, look, you had Alec Burks here. He played McBride when Brunson went da when Brunson went down forty seven minutes. That to me says a lot. So I think McBride's going to be in that rotation too. He came off the bench early today too. So yeah, yeah. I, I think I sure. think he's made that made that uh, that choice. He's made that mark. And I mean, look, he's shooting the three ball well. He's getting better again downhill. Yeah. I think McBride stays in there. Where I yeah. do agree with you, I think it depends on the situation in the series, whether you go with Precious yeah. or Bogey. Does it, do we need more defense right. or do we need more shooting? I do All agree right. with you there. I, like you, would like to lean towards Precious. Look, so. I said my one on my apology tour. I wrote the I got the apology form. All right. I did all that. I, I think it should be precious by the way that he's been hooping. You got to give Precious his kudos, man. Uh, but I do get Bogey, especially since he's given you some 20-point games. Between him and Burks, he's been giving you the better shooting. Hey, Dreadlocks. There he is. There he is. <laughs> CK, I got to ask you, what's with the Dreadlocks, man? You you know better. Why, why do I I'm trying to, to remember. We, I think it was in one of the play-by-plays. I had complimented somebody having dreads or i said i think everybody looks better in dreads and we just ran with it so everyone was put in dreadlocks since wow. then i just don't remember who it was but then we just started putting everybody in dreadlocks every time we did the play by play so and wait a so minute. far not one person's looked bad in dreadlocks yet so wait a minute have you done tom thibodeau in dreads we have we have had tips in what dreads. i missed this <laughs> we've had tips in dreads uh i think he was one of the first ones early 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 on when we started the meme um, Interesting. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone, I think Tom everyone's Thibodeau been in the dreads, dreads, man. Yeah. Tom Thibodeau with dreads. There we go. Come on, man. Now, now, I've seen everything with Tom Thibodeau and dreads. 
All right, let's get back to let's get back to the lines. Let's see if we got way too mellow back on the line. Way too mellow, are you there? Way too mellow going once. Going twice. Way too mellow, man. You're 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 disappointing me, my guy. You're disappointing me. I'm giving you I'm giving you an opportunity, man. Maybe you got to jump out of the Discord, jump back in, reset the mic, and then we can hear you. But let's go to JBK to H Town. All right, JBK to H Town. What's going on? Unmute your mic. Jay. Jay, are you there? Oh my God! Everyone's just not unmute. Everyone's just away from the from the Discord. What is happening now? What is happening? <laughs> we are, we are, we are. Holy cow, people! Get on the game. Yeah, y'all gotta get ready. Walk in. Yeah. We, gotta we got to late in, games we got, coming we got up. Call to make. Yeah, we got calls yeah. to take. We we need to hear what pe the people got to say. And you're all just come on, guys. I'm gonna give you a time to get your mics correct, everything situated. So you know what we're gonna do right now, CK. We're gonna go to okay. our ad read. So you know what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to the Manscaped ad read right now. <clears throat> so let's let me get prepared for this. All right. <sighs> Top of the morning to you. This episode is brought to you by St. Patrick's Day Shamrock Shavers Manscaped. This year, don't just chase rainbows. Make your own pot of gold and groom your little leprechaun with the leaders in below the kit care. Say goodbye to your clover forest with Manscaped Lawnmowers 5.0 and let your confidence shine bright. Embrace the luck of the Irish and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. Head over to manscaped.com and use the promo code KFTV for 20% off and free shipping. Yeah, that's right. You heard me. For the St. Patrick's Day. We got St. Patrick's Day right around the corner. You know we got to do the St. Patrick's Day ad read for Manscaped. And look, guys, DK's got it. I got it. CP's got it. JD's got it. We all got all the, the grooming tools for Manscaped, and we love it, all right? No testimonials, but we can we can, we can can tell you that it does, gets the job done. So make sure to support our sponsor. Use that promo code KFTV to get 20% off and free shipping. And come on, guys. It, it'll be life-changing, all right? It's absolutely life-changing mm. i see that the chat is loving absolutely loving uh <laughs> the ad read right now from manscape uh, you you hit us so aggressively with that top of the morning i wasn't ready bro you hit us the top of the morning too i was like okay here we are yeah. we're in <laughs> <laughs> I look man gotta go with uh gotta go with my guy um why am i blanking on the name right now Kendrick Lamar, top of the morning, top of the yeah, morning, no, top of the morning. God. Oh my God. Yeah, you already yeah, know what it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> God. Oh my God. <laughs> I've heard that stupid loop uh, version of it too many times in my lifetime. Too many times. It seems like you're sick of it. It seems like you're sick of it. A little bit. A little bit. All right. Mm -hmm. You know what we're going to do? Let's get back to the lines, CK. Let's go to we our got. guy, Cody. Let's go to Cody Glock. Let's see if Cody Glock's ready. Cody Glock. Are you there, my guy? Are you ready? Are you ready to unmute your mic and talk to us? I, I, I'm live. I'm premium. There we go. We hey. got somebody here. Cody, what's going on, man? Hey, Ethan Righteous. You know, yo, shout out Manscaped Ma. I have Brazil turnovers because of Manscaped Ma. I have zero turnovers because I take care of the ball profusely with the utmost friction in my Mixiano. No testimonials. Yo, you see, guys, I told you. OG is the most important person to our defense. And look what happens when we get only one of the mandem back, which is an important mandem. OG ain't miss a damn beat. He's like Jadakiss out there. He ain't never missing no beat. One third of perfect cell is here. And he's already kicking Yamcha and Tien's ass all up and down <laughs> Madison Square Garden. Yo. Guys, you, you you have an outside hooping in the park with the dogs and your team streaking it up. So it's like you only got two minute breaks. You ran like three straight wins, you know. OG's yep. like that Gatorade you go get when you tell Amanda, you are like, hold up, guys. I need to go to the <laughs> store real quick, you know. He's the first sip of Gatorade after the game's pause. Mm, now I can you. breathe. We all can breathe. Don't get me wrong. I love the 28-point Dante Dantelli performances and them a true a 20-point double-double games. But like CP said, we don't need that. 
You see, first game, OG comes back. That rock is back to moving 30 plus assists tonight. That's what we need. We need that 20 here, 20 here, 13 here, 14 there, 16 here, team effort. That's, that's what having OG back brings you. Ain't nothing changed for Philly tonight. Still in the 70s with that 90s NBA score, stupid people. Bro, they not, we not worried about you. OG is back. When mm. Randall and Mitchie come back, we cover everything there's to cover, and we become the Rikers Island for lower Knicks because we locking everyone up and we beating everybody up on camera. Shout out Nikki Pipes, my. Shout out CP Free Throws, my. Shout out CK, my. Shout out Alex, my. Shout out Chuck D. Hashtag P in the chat, my. Shout out Sean Williams, Corner 3 Knicks Assassin. Shout out Shake Melton for putting up points on the board tonight. Shout out Shalen. I'm out, Shalen. <laughs> that is Cody Glock on the line. We got the Sheldon at the end, too. You know how it is. You know, you know how it is when Cody Glock is on the line. I wasn't ready for the Sean Williams one, man. That was, I wasn't ready for Sean Williams. That was the one that got me. Oh, uh, yeah, Sean to Sean Williams in the corner three, man. Sean oh, Williams in the corner three. I wasn't ready for that one. Cody oh, Jones. man. That reference for the Gatorade was wild. <laughs> yeah, yo, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I got it, but, you know, could have been worded different. Hey, Cody, yo, come on, man. Come hey, on. Hey, yo, hey, yo, come, come on. on. But that's Cody, man. That's what he does. Let's get back to the lines, though, CK. Let's go to my guy, Do Things. We got Do Things on the line. Do Things, what's good, bro? What's up, bro? Let me just take off speaker real quick. No, oh, you man, he, my man knows no the rules. Phone, no speaker phone. No oh, speaker phone, oh. indeed. Uh oh, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> he got his warm up song. We need you in the game, man. Come on, man. The breakaway's got to come off. Come, come back on. to me. Come back to me. I can't find the button. Oh my! Oh, go yes, here. Get his jersey. You gotta go get his jersey. You good yet? You good yet? Uh, uh, no, oh, no, no, oh, no, no, we stubbed him in and he, he pulled a Michael oh, Beasley man. on Yeah, him, he man. was not ready. He ain't got a jersey ready. Oh, man. Wait, you ready now? I can't find the button. I can't find the Just button. Go with it. You're fine. Out. You're fine. You sound good. You sound great, right, bro. What's up, guys? What's up, CK? What's up, Alex? What up, man? Um, what up, what up? I, I was trying to say, trying to figure out the, the, the stupid uh, speakerphone button. But I just want to say, I don't know what happened to the 79ers, bruv. Your man was out here, bruv. My 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 guy Brunson was cooking, bruv. Mm. Shout out to Manscape. I also want to shout out Underdog, bruv, because I turned five dollars into one oh five today, bruv. I'm hey. on fire, bruv. You feel me, bruv? But that's all I gotta say. Shout out everybody. Shout out CP. I'm out. Appreciate you, do things. Appreciate you, bruv. Yeah, bruv. To Kelly Ubre out there. Come on, bruv. What happened, bruv? We're in good tonight, bruv. <laughs> guy acting all tough, man. He has one dunk oh, today God. on Hartenstein, and then you think yeah. he was like ready to turn the corner, and it's like, nope, yeah. not tonight, my guy. Not yeah. tonight. You know, yeah. we, were, we were here for Tuesday, though. We were here for Tuesday. The Knicks were here for Tuesday, Kelly yeah. Oubre. Come right. on, bro. You didn't show up. Your team didn't show up. You got Maxi back, too. That couldn't help, right? No. Yeah. Talking yeah, they spicy. Got better. Talking mm -hmm. spicy. Whatever. He had 19 points, man. Only 19 points for Kelly Oubre tonight. Man was talking spicy. He got 19 points on what? Let's see. We'll see this. Seven Probably for 15. Yeah. Whatever. Tough, man. Tough out oh, here. Man. You know it ain't good when Kelly Oubre is the one uh, leading your team in scoring. They but still, hey. They still got him in a Hornets jersey on that picture. It's crazy. Anyway. Yo, that's wild. Anyways. But hey. It is what it is, bruv. It is what it is. <laughs> let's get back to it. We got. Let's see. Should I try way too mellow again? Way too mellow. I'm going to go. Let's see. Way too mellow. Are you there this time? Mellow. We'll see, though. Way too mellow? Way too mellow. Oh, this is just going to be a running joke tonight. Way too mellow. I need you to be ready. Come on, people. It's too mellow. Lock in. All it's right. Too mellow. Let's get to some news. Uh, Daniel, can you, pull up, can you pull up the tweet by Ian Begley, please? Let's talk about R Julius Randle's injury. Um, because, hey. It, I like the detail that uh, Begley went into because I feel like it gave us a little bit more clarity on where Julius is. And there we go right there. Let me just pull it up on my end so that uh, I, we can all read it together as one big, happy, crazy Knicks family that we are. So <laughs> let's start it off. Ian Begley, tweet of today, said, Julius Randle's conditioning is good, Tom Thibodeau said this evening. He's shooting, doing individual work. That's all good. He can do five against zero, that sort of thing. Light contact with pads. Randall hasn't been cleared for full contact yet. 
That's the next step in his rehab from a shoulder dislocation. Tom Thibodeau was asked on Tuesday about the specific steps Randall's, Randall needs to take to be cleared for contact. It's, and Tibbs said, it's him feeling better. You've got to continue to strengthen the shoulder and go from there. The coach said there is no timetable for Randall to get cleared for contact. If or when he returns, Randall needs to be able to take contact on his shoulder and use it to create space. There is risk of re-injury, of course. At the moment, Randall is taking controlled contact, Thibodeau said. You know what the move is, so you can brace yourself for it. So there's a progression to what you have to go through. Randall will travel with the Knicks on their four-game West Coast road trip, which begins Thursday night in Portland. CK, after hearing all of that, after hearing all of that, mm-hmm. how do you feel about it? How do you feel about Julius Randall's uh, rehab and, and where mm-hmm. he, his status right now? Um, I'm trying to pinpoint the which which they're more worried about. Is it the fear of re-injury? Um, because when he put a little bit of light on the um, being able to create contact, I was like, ah, that makes sense. Because I was trying to understand why there's been such a holdup with them. Because remember, uh, they were saying that he was a little bit further along than OG, and here we are with OG back in the game, and he's still not even doing um any actual contact drills, but. Um, yeah, I, I, I just want to know what the, the bigger worry is. Is there the, the worry that he is a little fragile with the shoulder and there's a risk of him being able to re-dislocate or if that's, if that's a thing? Or is it just because they, they know that he is still feeling some pain and he's not going to be able to play to Julius Randle levels because he's not going to be able to create the space like he does by dropping his shoulder? Because Julius Randle is a very physical player and we all know that so i think that's that's the biggest takeaway i'm looking at i just want to know what the the concern is because that's that, that's the thing that he said post game on sunday that had me worried and then what led to this tweet is he was saying that there's some worry amongst um the coaching staff and the medical team that da, 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 da. i'm like worry i don't like that word worry just say mm. that you know it's a little held up don't talk about worry now what are we worried about so i think that's the big thing i'm looking at what is what is the bigger um thing that we are worried about is it the re-injury or just be, he's not able to put too much um umph onto his shoulder yet? that's that's the big takeaway other than that all i care about is him coming back fully healthy i agree with our first call of the night my hope is that we get him at least with some games before the playoffs um but uh, if if we can at least get him back 100 percent or at least 90 percent and going to the playoffs that way i'll take that as a dub but it'd be great to get them that that week before the playoffs begin so we can get some rust off and go into the, the postseason because the poor guy got some allegations to beat as far as his postseason play. A lot of people mm. holding him accountable on how he looks in the postseason. Last year, we had the ankle situation. This year, we got shoulder. So, you know, I, I want the guy to be able to, you know, beat those allegations of him not being a good postseason player. So, um, yeah, just want to make sure he's healthy. But, yeah, the worry is the word I don't like, Alex. I don't like that word worry i don't like it i don't like it and i don't blame you ck i wouldn't like hearing somebody being worried either but to me when i read this it seems like it's not necessarily the risk of re-injury i think okay. everyone acknowledges that there's the risk of re-injury i mean he's not going to be 100 percent going into the playoffs we know that and right, sure. no matter what he does he's a physical type player there's always that there's always that you know, risk of him re-injuring. He could have surgery this off season and still have an injured shoulder again. Uh, right. I mean, that's, that's just how it goes. I mean, we saw when Melo was on this team back in 2013, you know, he played through an injured shoulder, then had right. surgery. So we all know how that can work out. But I think the yeah. thing in this case is that you want Randall to come back and play his game, which is being physical. And I think <clears> the bigger <throat> worry is that he's not been cleared for contact. That's why I gathered from just what everything was has been discussed over the last 24 to 48 hours about him is that they want him to get back to being like going into contact because as you said, and what I want is for him to play in some games, you know, and even Carlos said it too on the line, right? He he said he wanted Randall to come back for the last five games to play. I think that's the bare minimum you need for Randall because it would just be crazy in my eyes to have him come back and playoffs, not get any run with the starting unit again. Like, sure, they were clicking right before, but Randall's a rhythm type player. You need him to get back on the court and just find his groove before going into the playoffs. Just look at what happened at the beginning of the season, coming from ankle surgery, right? He had surgery this offseason, had time to still get workouts and put up shots, but he didn't look right at the beginning of the season. And then after the six to 10 games, he starts becoming that guy that we know the season to be that third time all-star. And 
for that, that's why I say he needs to get back on the court and start playing. So I think based off everything, it's the fact that he hasn't been cleared for contact yet. Like yeah. to know when to brace, that's that's one thing. I mean, that's good just from a standpoint. Like I'm happy that he can do that at least, right? That he's hitting yeah. the pads and then is able to play with some like known contact, right? Yeah, some contact. But obviously, yeah. but obviously the thing is going against another person. That's going to be different. You know, when people start moving at 100 miles an hour, it's a different level of force than just pad. So once he can start doing that, that would be great. But the fact that he's traveling with the team, you see him on the sideline, you don't see him in a sling, you see these videos of him shooting and him practicing yeah. his game. Um, a lot of jumpers, which we know he can do, um, yeah. which obviously how much can you practice being a downhill threat just against air? But yeah. to see that, it's given me some indication that he's probably going to do a little bit more jump shooting just to not have to use that shoulder as much as he did in the paint. But from everything I'm like that we get to see, I'm encouraged that he'll probably return probably like he'll probably return for the season to make it to the postseason. Hopefully at some point towards the end of March, hopefully beginning hopefully. of April. So that way he can get some run. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping for. So we're all hoping for. What do you? What is? What do the people th in the chat think? Do you think Randall's going to return this season? Do you think he'll return late March? Do you think he'll return on the West Coast trip? Do you think he'll return in April, or do you think that he'll return for the postseason? Let us know in the chat. Let us know what you guys think in the chat. When do you think Julius Randall will return? We need to know. Some people saying that we just need to go forward with Precious. That's what the few comments I just read. I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm not even gonna answer that. I'm anyway. Not <laughs> We're going to keep moving along. All right. Let's get back to JBK to H Town. J from J from Brooklyn, I'm guessing, to H Town. Are you there? JBK, are you there? Going once. Going twice. Once again, guys. Come on. We need to be better, guys. If you're on the line, I'm going to go to you. If you're on the line, stay by <laughs> your stay by your phones and stay ready. This is just getting ridiculous now. Now, now I just feel like you're just all messing with me. <laughs> Now I just feel like you guys are messing with me and you're just trying to have this bit go on for the rest of the show. You know what? Forget that. All right. But so let's go to the super chat that we got from Chuck D. Hey. Right? Shout out to Chuck D. Throw a hashtag PE in the chat. Chuck gave us a $10 super chat. He said, OG is the oil in the Knicks motor. Josh is the best rebounder that size since Barkley. Uh, it's crazy how Burks has contracted the 10 game Derek Harper flu. So similar, yo. March will be forgotten in April. <laughs> if he makes the rotation, he probably might though. Burks makes the rotation. I'm just look. I, I'm not convinced that Tibbs is gonna have the, you know, to 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 pull him. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I mean, if he gives him the opportunity, I think. I think if he if he has the opportunity to be able to play him, Tibbs is gonna take it. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not saying, look, this is not me what I want. I'm just saying, I just feel like Tibbs really, really wants to have Burks be that guy that he had before he got, uh, we, we didn't resign him. I'm just saying, like I said, I feel like Tibbs uh, is, is more uh, in love with Burks than CP is. I think he's a bigger fan than CP is. Put him in the trunk. Put him in the what? Here we go. Here's CP as a here. Is he, here? Oh. he is in the chat. The he said Burks back. found it in, in the mid range. The dog is back. Yes, CP. The dog is back. Burks oh, found it. Okay. Okay. This is, this is actually a good segue to, to the little break that we got on the show. Okay. Because oh, guess what, boy. TK? I don't know What's if you know that? that. Shout out What's to our that? guy, Tyler. Shout out to producer Tyler. He's the guy that cuts up all the highlights, cuts the film, makes a lot of the social media posts that you guys see, posts and social. All right. Shout out to Tyler. All right. Okay. So when you were seeing all this stuff on Twitter through KFTV's account on Here Twitter, all these game highlights and stuff while the game's going on, that's Tyler. Tyler's doing a great job. All right, Daniel, please pull up the tweet because we got to do this. All right, it's in the it's in the it's in the post game live oh, chat. Okay. Make sure to go there. I'm I'm scrolling through Twitter just trying to make just as there's a TV break. And what's the first thing that I see? What's the first? Oh, not that one. Sorry, it's not that one. Hold on one second. That's not it. Sorry, Daniel, that's not the one. Let me go through this because I'm I'm scrolling Twitter. I see something from K, the T KFTV account, and this is just getting nasty out here. All right, this is just getting nasty. We have CP infiltrating. Uh, infiltrating the uh, the decision making of Tyler right now. Use the most recent one, uh, Daniel, with showing highlights of Alec Burks. What are we doing here? What, you uh, what are we password. doing here? Come on, come on. What are we doing here? We're saying, oh, Alec Burks with the shifty pull up jumper. 
guys, if this if this isn't if this isn't CP pulling the full on propaganda for us, <laughs> put him in the top. come on now. Put him in the what? This is just wild. This put is just him wild. in the top. There it is. There it is. There it is. I'm about to say there's so little highlights that uh, poor Daniel was having a hard time finding it. Hard time. Just insane, man. Look at this guy. Look, what is this? We, we make it, we get one highlight from Burks, and now CP's out here. Oh, we're going to tweet about it. This has been happening every single game at this point. We have to get a... It's like the first highlight, too, that comes out. It's like the first one. First one. CP, this is nasty work on all levels. On all counts, this is nasty top. work. Come on. Put him in the what? Tyler, what are, we, what are we doing, man? What are, what, are you, what are you paying to do this? This is insane. You uh, think Tyler going to override? What you mean? Tyler's like, yeah, go ahead, post it, man. Go ahead. I don't want Tyler's to like, all right. <laughs> CP's probably like, yo, Tyler, I'll pay you an extra whatever to, so you can keep posting Burke's highlights. Tyler's probably, his eyes are probably bleeding. Uh, that's point. what it is. That's the one. That's what happened. That's what, uh, Tyler, we on to you, man. That's what happened. He said, oh, yeah? I'll bet. Go ahead. I won't say nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, get more bread for this? Absolutely. I'll I'll right, let the right, eyes right. bleed so I can do this. Yeah, all right. right, 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 right. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said Burke's locked up, buddy. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Oh this guy man. Well, there there's the Burke segment for the show. Thank there you, CP. Is. Thank you, CP, for for promoting your guy. I hope he gave you the jersey after tonight's game. I I'm hope he not- gave you the jersey. I'm just not here for the shenanigans because uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a long-time diehard uh, Shake Milton guy, and I feel like, you know, Burks is impeding on what could be some good Shake Milton minutes. So I'm a little frustrated, you know. Me and my two other Hive members of the Shake Milton Hive are upset that Burks over here getting opportunity after opportunity when Shake Milton and his, uh, what is it, I think it's like 6'7", uh, wingspan, I can't remember. Whatever, we ready to play. We ready to play. So we watching Burks over here, man. I'm watching Burks. Well, at least Tibbs has learned the last time. He is not starting Burks over McBride as he did for IQ. Yeah, let's yeah, let that go. Right. Yeah, let's hundred percent. Hundred percent. Quick, fast, in a hurry. Let's cut that thing out. All right. So yeah. we're done with that. And but hey, to deal with all of this, let's talk about our other sponsor. All right, Ginger Hales. Because look, to stomach all of this, you know, ginger is good for calming the stomach. CP. I mean, CK. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. CK. Ginger is good for calming the stomach. So shout out to our new sponsor, Ginger Hales. All right. And guys, I highly recommend Ginger Hales. I just got my shipment in this past weekend. Look, I got I got I well, look, I got lavender. I got the lavender ginger uh ginger lemonade first and foremost. Let me see. Let me let me let me rewind this back. Let me rewind this back. Shout out to our sponsor, Ginger Hales Lemonade, okay? The household name for refreshing ginger lemonade. From the original ginger lemonade to exotic flavors like pineapple and kiwi strawberry, each bottle is packed with the zing of real ginger and the zest of fresh fruits. The best part is they ship nationwide. So use the code KFTV at checkout for an exclusive 15% discount on your first order. And that's what I wanted to get to. The flavors, man, with the ginger, with the lemonade is just chef's kiss. All right. I got, first of all, our guy hooked us, hooked me up. All right. I got two kiwi strawberry ginger lemonades, by far the best flavor, in my opinion. I got the pineapple right here on deck. So when I, when I'm going, to, when I'm done with the water, I'm going for that one. All right. Here's the. Here's a little bit of the uh, kiwi strawberry that I have left. That was freaking delicious. We also got the OG, which is just the ginger and the lemonade itself. Mm, we also got the pineapple, like good. I showed you on deck. And then also we got lavender, man. Come on. My wife is a big ginger and lemonade person. When I told her, hey, you like ginger? She's like, yeah. I was like, you like lemonade? She's like, absolutely. And then I told her, what if I told you we had something from a new sponsor that's com- combined into both? She was thrilled for that. So she loves it. I love it. You guys will love it too. Make sure to support our sponsor, Ginger Hales. Use that promo code KFTV to get at checkout for an exclusive 15% discount on your first order. All right. Love that. Yeah, man. Absolutely. And I got to look. I'm going to have some just to stomach this uh, Burks conversation over here. I need that ginger. We got a $5 super chat from Christian B. Put him in the what? Burks mitt must be CP's. Put him in the what? I will chief, yeah. Yeah. Everybody else was just like, oh, this guy again, you see CP stand up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the one man. guy. The one guy. Shout out to our guy, CP the artist. He said uh, he, he sent a hilarious uh, gift saying CP is the only one of the Burks I've roaming through the Twitter sphere just supporting this guy. It's amazing the lanes that CP will go to support his guy, uh, Alec Burks. All right. Yep. Let's keep it moving, though. 
CP so, and Tibbs, man. CP and Tibbs. <laughs> CP and Tibbs. Oh, man. Jesus. All right. Let's see. JK, we're going back to you, man. Let's see. Are you back? Are you here? Can y'all hear me this time around? Ah, yes, sir. There we go. Yes, sir. Now it's yes, sir. Yep. Yo, I've Welcome. been ready, but oh, on, thank man. you. Yo, what's going on now? What's going on, CK? I've been ready, but my phone wasn't. You know, technology these days can can work with it. Mm -hmm. But man, today's game, first off, great game. Secondly, man, I I saw that there were four players who had a had a plus minus minus today. Two of them got got garbage minutes, which was Jericho Sims and and Shake Milton, and the other two was Bogan, Bogey, and Alec Burks on a on a damn near 30, 30 point win. There's two players in a plus minus minus. So I'm hoping that what you said, CK, I'm hoping that's not true. I'm hoping <laughs> Bogey is not in the lineup. I'm hoping the only place he goes is in the trunk with Burks and ship them back to Detroit. That's the only place they need to go because both of them are, are trash. And honestly, like, Bogey, he can't, he can't – first off, what did he airball an 18-foot jump shot today? Burks got the green light like he got it like that, and he doesn't. Neither one of them can play defense. I mean, a bogey can't really stay in front of anybody. I don't even think he can stay in front of Kyle Anderson laterally. And I just don't see where they fit in here. Precious brings so much more to the table. It's, it runs smoother uh, when they're not on the court. And it's just every time they're on the court, the other team ends up going on a run. And we don't need that in the playoffs. So I'm hoping we can figure it out. I'm hoping we can figure out a lineup that works. But I think they're, they're too much of a liability with Burks in his, in his shot attempts. And Bogey just, I mean, he's just not able to play defense like that, let's be real. And I just think that, I mean, it's going to make us more, it's going to make us worse often. So, I I, I mean, I just want to get y'all take on that. But um, I hope y'all have a great night. And, yeah, I, I hope they're not in the lineup. Shout out to JBK to H-Town for calling in. He said Bogey and Burks ain't it, CK. And this is another reason why I can't stand Alec Burks. Because look at what's happening. He is bringing Boyan Bogdanovich down with him. I hate it. Boyan Bogdanovich has had some solid games in New Jersey. The defensive thing, fine, sure. But the thing is, we, we forget where we need some offense. We needed offense. And look, I would. we and Alex both made it clear that we would love Precious to get the rotation uh, 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 minutes over Boyan. We're saying that. But at the same time, I'm not going to let Bogdanovich get carried down because of Burks. <laughs> this is my beef. This is my beef. And Tibbs is setting Bogey up because Bogey has had some solid names. The only player that played well on Sunday was Boyan Bogdanovich. He was the only one. And he did not get any opportunity to give us any kind of spark because all we need was six measly points in the fourth quarter, and the only guy that could score the ball was on the bench. This is my beef. And I'm not saying, you know, like he's a savior and this, that, and the third, and he's that. He's, everything you said about him defensively is true, but he's getting clumped with Burks, and all of Burks' mistakes are now highlighting Bogey's mistakes because Tibbs wants to play the two of them together. I want to see what happens more consistently if we put Boyan Bogdanovich in situations where he's next to guys like OG Ananobi the defender, or he's there playing more with Deuce McBride, the defender. Like th those are the situations where I want to see him. Not when he's out there running with Alec Burks out there, hoping to get things going. And, you know, poor Jericho Sims, who was having some of those tough games defensively. Like this is my problem. It's all about matchups. It's all about the rotation and bogey again, the short end of the stick. And I'm not allowing it. It's all Burks <laughs> fault. So this is my beef. This is my beef, man. Bogey getting carried down. What is uh, real quick question? What is what's Bogey averaging on the season, Alex? Was boy was averaging on the season? Let me pull up the stats right. Don't worry, uh, Daniel got it. Oh wow, he does what's it? Look, I can't guilty by so look at the chat, and they're not even they're not even they, they got no no uh shame in the chat. Hey man, guilty by association sucks to suck. He came with him in, from Detroit. Hey, can't 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 control it. <laughs> you know it is what it is. Okay, you know tough. And that's my beef, man. I think Boyan Bogdanovich. I feel like he is somebody when we are fully healthy. I think he's somebody that can give us some extra offensive spark. Yes, the defense isn't great, but you know there's other players on the team that I'm not going to say names that are not great defensively as well, and we can still make it work. But if you're out there pairing them in in the perimeter with Alec Burks. Yes, he's going to get way more exposed. And that's my beef, man. 
I'm so irritated with this. I was just talking about this, how you see a different version of him when he's out there with rotation that makes sense compared to when he's out there with his Detroit teammate. And it's irritating me. And now everybody's tearing up Bogdan or Boyan Bogdanovich. And I hate it. I'm not here for it, man. Put him in the what? On the I'm season, done. he is averaging. Put him in the trunk. I'm done. He's Sorry. averaging That's 18 over. points, three rebounds, two assists, shooting 46% from the field, 41% from downtown, 79% from the free throw line. That is what Boyan Bogdanovich, or as our guy Cody Guac would say, Bodega is doing. So that's what he's doing. CK is vexed. He said by association. I can't his stand name's it. being tarnished by Alex I Burks. Can't, I can't stand Protect it. Protect CK at all costs, by the way. Protect CK because I if he cuts out right now, it. we all know CP's got something to do with this. I can't stand it. Yeah, because it's the look, if it look, I would be right. Y'all know, y'all, I'd be right there with you if you was out there getting minutes that made sense and he was stinking up the joint. Like today, when he don't think I forgot when you shot that fadeaway air ball. I ain't gonna let you slide on that one, boy. I saw that. I don't care if we was up by 27 points. We saw it. So you ain't completely free. But at the same time, now that he's catching these strays because of Burks, that I'm not going to stand by. I feel like Boyan has a spot on this team. We just mentioned it in certain situations in the playoffs when we're looking for offense, and he's a guy that's been there, literally been to the playoffs every year of his career but one, and he was always an impact on those teams. That's something that's going to be vital for us going uh, going into these playoff runs. And that's when all of a sudden everybody's going to treat him like Precious and be like, oh, oh, you know, he's actually a pretty good shooter. Oh, you know, apology for him, number one. Oh, this, then, the third. That's what happens. Y'all y'all want to attack these dudes before we give them the opportunity to give themselves, uh, to, to defend themselves. Don't let Burks bog you down. I was going to try and make his last name fit. I, couldn't get it. I, I tried. I tried. Oh, I tried. Oh I, tried. I, tried. I tried. I tried. I tried. I couldn't oh, find boo. it. I couldn't find it. I wanted to put the button. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Oh my but nah, god! Nah, I, I feel like Boyan catches some unnecessary strays. Like, yes, his defense isn't great, but I think there is a a, a, a very important role for him with this team when we are healthy, and that's why. I'm okay with him getting the edge and getting some minutes in certain situations in the playoffs over Precious because I feel like we're going to need his help offensively in certain um, matchups. And I'm not going to say the team's names yet. That's it. I I'm standing by it. I hear what you're saying, but if Burks is in, in is, is is essentially dirt at this point at the level, Boyan is like what grass? <laughs> like that's the level hey, that he's playing. Hey, hey, one of those two things grows. That's all I'm saying. Oh, there we go. I like that. I like that analogy. Anyway, I hear what you're saying. He has given us 20 point games. He has get shot Burks well. Off my face. Get Burks off my face. Get get him off. <laughs> <laughs> get him off. <laughs> uh, look, I'll say this. The thing about Boyan is that he's got to just knock down his open shots, man. Like you know, and like hopefully that improves. Like we've seen, yeah. he can do that from time to time, but. And I don't know what it's been like the last couple of games, but when he's wide open, man, it can't be like these air balls, these bricks. Like he's got to be better about that. That's the one thing like you traded for this guy to be a knockdown three point shooter, especially when he's left wide open. And he has sometimes delivered on that. Other times it's been ugly, uh, better than better than, better than Burks. Okay. Way better than oh. Burks. But I'm just saying he's got to, he's got to cash in on those. That's the only thing I have. All right, I'll just, I'll just, I'll make the PDF, bro. I'll make the apology form PDF. I'm ready. No, whatever. Whenever y'all right. ready, I'll be ready to send them out. It's okay. Hey, don't worry. Hey, anyway, CP said he's uh, he's losing to Nick's chick in Papa Shot yeah, right I saw now. That. He, and 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 he's like he's deflecting. He damn sure is deflecting. No, no, mm -hmm. he's not deflecting because guess, guess why? Because he's shooting like Alec Burks. Anyway, moving <laughs> along. Let's keep this thing going. Let's go to, you know, our favorite, our favorite. Uh, by the numbers, let's go to by the numbers. Let's go to this game by the numbers, all right? Let's look mm. at the stats, all right? So, Daniel, let's pull up that graphic. All right, key stats of the night, night. all right? And what? Look, look, Knicks won 106 to 79, my favorite stat. More points than the other team. I can always live by that. But when looking at the other numbers, you see that the Knicks were able to out outperform in many other key, key categories against the 76ers. One, they out-rebound them 58 to 39. Assists 32 to 17. A team that's not really good at usually creating a lot of assists, they did so tonight. Uh, another area, shooting field goal percentage, 51% to 
three-point percentage, 35% to 24%. Free throw shooting, 80% to 69%. That's where the Knicks were able to win. And then you go down to points in the paint. Knicks wow. bullied them 46 to 36. Second chance opportunities, almost close, close battle. Knicks had 12. Sixers had 10. And then fast break points, the Knicks had 19 to the Sixers 15. All of that to say that the Knicks really came out with their A game shooting wise. And that's what carried them away, especially with their defense. So those are the key yeah. stats for tonight. CK, what's your takeaway from the stats? Uh, 79ers looked exactly uh, the same with Tyrese Maxey than without him on Sunday. And the Knicks capitalized. And we did a great job. Um, again, though, that field goal percentage, love to see them shooting before below 40 as a team. And that 8 for 33, sheesh, that is, uh, you know, uh, tragic to see, but great for us. And like I said, I, I feel like that's just going to be our MO going forward, even if it's not the, the 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 big defensive stats. But I think if we're out here having these teams shooting these kind of percentages going forward, I think that's going to be one of uh, – that's going to be our MO um, going forward, and it's going to be up to us to then also follow that up with an offensive night like we had tonight. Because I like seeing 50% from the field. 12 of 15 from free throw for the Knicks, great free throw night, in my opinion. 12 of 15, phenomenal free throw night. So. Absolutely, absolutely indeed. And remember, the key stats of tonight is brought to you by none other than our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Use that promo code KFTV to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. And guys, I love playing Underdog Fantasy, especially when the game is on. You can do pickems, you can do drafts, pick and stick them, choose anywhere between two to five players. You select which statistical category you think they'll go higher or lower in, whether that be if it's the NBA, but you can also choose any other sport as well. And if a whole litany of other sports that are covered on Underdog, so you can choose there and make sure to choose your selections when it comes to pick them as well. You know, the other thing I like about Underdog is the drafts. And look, this first time we did a four person draft, it was CK, CP, JD, and myself competing against each other in this draft. And right now, I'm in the mm -hmm. lead. How how close is it though? Because I was right there. It's two. I got two fifty three. My team is about to be finished. I, I got one quarter left. My team mm -hmm. is uh, two fifty three uh, right now. The next is your team two oh three uh, with two hundred three points. But you That's got tough. you got four quarters left, so you still got a chance to pass me. That's DP has two hundred points. I think CP could be the guy that comes out of nowhere and wins this one. He's got ten quarters left. Oh my god. Oh dang. He's got he's got 200 points. He's got he's got enough time. And JD, dang. JD's got 12 quarters left and he's got 148 points. So he has a ways to go to catch up. But yeah. hey, we've yeah. seen crazier things happen, but as of right now, I am in the lead with 253 and this is the team that I I selected tonight. I got Josh Hart. Great selection, all right? Got me Great night to have him. Yeah, he got me 62 points. Obviously, we know the triple-double that he got. I then also took Jason Tatum, who got me 48 <clears> fantasy <throat> points tonight as well. I then w went with Victor Wembanyama, who got 41 uh, fantasy points for me. Jalen Brunson was another selection I took with 40. Kyle Kuzma uh, got me 39. And then Devin Vassell with 22. Let's see who CK got on his team. CK chose. But didn't you have the first overall pick too? Yeah, and I went with Shea. Yeah, you got SGA. So you got SGA who got you 54 points. You also have mm -hmm. Tyrese Halliburton who's got you 49 points. Mm -hmm. Chet Holmgren with 41. Presh 26. This is my last pick. This is the beginning of the third quarter, so there could be a chance for uh, Kawhi to do some damage. Yeah, I heard Almost. Kawhi got hurt, though. I was just seeing the chat mm -hmm. talking about Kawhi getting hurt, so that's, that hurts me as well. But maybe James Harden steps up. We'll see. But, yeah, that's not good for me. Well, they got enough firepower on the team, so maybe James Harden will step up. Who knows? We'll okay. see what happens. And then CP's team. CP has Derek White, Drew Holiday, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Derek White, well, let me go walk back. Derek White with 45 points, Drew Holiday with 42, Giannis with 39, Darren Fox with 30. Uh, you have Rudy Gobert with 28, and Tyrese Maxey with 23. So that's uh, CP's team right there. And like I said, he's got mm. 10 quarters left. Uh, between all of his players, so he could come out of nowhere. Oh, he just passed you, CK. He just passed you to get to, to with 200. Second. He has now 206 yeah. while you still have 205. Yeah. And then we have JD. Uh, JD with Fred Van Vliet, who has four, 50 points. DeMontis Sabonis with 33. Ant-Man, Anthony Edwards with 28. 
Paul George with 24, Damian Lillard with 16, and Nas Reed with five points. So that is JD's team. JD has 12 quarters to go. JD could come out of nowhere as well and be a, a sneaky, uh, sneaky victor. But it's interesting. Let's we'll see what teams he's got. Is that Kawhi one's going to hurt me? I think that's a yeah. wrap for me. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's see, who's JD got? See, Minnesota is still playing. So he's got Ant Man. He's got Paul George. So let's see. Yeah. He's got Anthony Edwards, Paul George, Damian Lillard, and Nas Reed. Those are the four last players he has yeah. going right now. So those guys could go off. Those guys could go off. So look, the draft is a lot of fun. You know, we it put is. some money down just to get some lunch mm -hmm. money. Whoever wins, obviously. Mm -hmm. Takes that home. Go get you some lunch. Go get some drinks. Whatever it may be, it's fun. Make sure to download the app Underdog Fantasy. Use that promo code KFTV to get up to a one hundred dollar match on your first yeah. deposit. Highly recommend it. Makes the game that much more interesting. Um, all right. Shout out to Javier Montalvo for the super chat. Appreciate you for the two dollar super chat. Uh, all right, CK. We got the West Coast trip coming up you do how do you feel about this west coast trip man what do you think the record will be uh for them it's portland sacramento uh denver i'm missing and golden state no golden steph state. curry for golden state apparently. yeah um i'm gonna be honest with you i i think oh god playing in denver is always a tough one i think there's a chance we get that steal but i'm gonna I'm go bold I, I feel really confident in us um getting og back I like how we're playing with our our chests uh, puffed out. I, I feel like we got some, you know, dog energy right now. Um, I think our only L, I think we, I think we take the L to uh, Denver just because it's always a tough place for us to play in. Um, I know we got a dub from it was was it last season or was it this season we we beat Denver in Denver. We beat Denver this season. Uh, we beat them last year in Denver last year, but we did beat them on our home court this year. Wait a minute. Why can't I hear you? I think you, I think you got muted. Hold on one second. How are you muted? How are you muted? Yeah, CK, your audio got cut. CK, what happened to your audio? Check your mic. Plug it back in. I don't know. Put him in the trunk. Put him in the what? Put him in the trunk. I see that it's green. I don't know what happened here. <laughs> Maybe hop back out and hop back in so we can see. Let's see if that works. CK. Yeah, hello. I can hear you. There we go. Now you're back. Oh, I could have. Oh, my fault. My bad, y'all. I was going to say. Um, all I was saying, CK damn files. In. Okay, hilarious, cat. All I was saying is, I was just going to say, I think we beat every single one of those teams outside of Denver. I think the Sacramento Knicks game is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be down the line. You know, uh, Sabonis loves to give us fits, especially without Julius Wrangler there to be the Julius, uh, the Sabonis stopper. It's going to be a tough one, but I still think the Knicks go out and tough that one out. I think Denver, though, is going to uh, – they're going to get us again in Denver. But other than that, I think we we take dubs against everyone else. I really do. Mm -hmm. I think that, we, you know, a lot on the line. Knicks know that, and we take advantage. So I think we take uh, just one L in this road trip. I think take one L. And who was it again that you said? Denver. Who's, who's... Denver. Denver. Okay. So the Knicks take one L against Denver. Interesting. I'm locking it in. I'm going to go mm. – <laughs> You're very bold, CK. No, it's the RKO on me. It's CP out of nowhere on CK's audio. His hey, stream man, just I'm caught up. You, you, better, you, better, you better lock doors, man. CP yeah, yeah, yeah. His stream just, just caught up. I see about Burks tonight. <laughs> um, just up so. That's what TM was saying. No, TM, TM knows, man. TM saying yeah. that CP may have, may have sent some hitmen out there for you, man. He can't be talking spicy about Burks, okay? You oh, saw what happened to me. Man. I talked spiky, spicy about Burks. We had our heated debate on, on KFTV. Next thing I know, I'm not on the next post game. JD took my spot. You know how it is. That's what happened, man. You know you know what I mean? So the, I was in timeout, according to the – Never. Yeah. CK right? never so showed up again. Be careful. Be careful, my man. Be careful. <laughs> but anyway, you're going with three and one. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna go two and two. 
just because I don't think that the Knicks without Julius Randle can take down Denver. I'd love to be surprised. I don't. I just, just Jokic is just on the tear on his own, man. And it's just it's just very tough to you can't stop Jokic. Um, that team's healthy right now. I, I just don't see. I don't see the Knicks being able to defeat them. So I'm going to count that as a loss. I do see them being Portland without Steph Curry. I then more inclined to say that they can defeat the Warriors, but then Sacramento is going to be iffy to me just because they play at such a good pace, man. Fox and Sabonis have been playing really well this season. I don't know. That one's tough. That one's tough, man. It's yeah. going to be a tough matchup. So Not you're too- saying, you're saying, I'm gonna, I'm I'm pulling now I'm gonna pull the the you know the devil's advocate here. You're saying that even with OJ and Obi back, we're still just gonna be you know a 500 team right now in the mid March on our way to the playoffs. Even with OJ and Obi injecting some energy into the lineup, I don't think we'll That's necessarily basically be where we've been since the injuries. We've been hovering around that 500. Like I said, uh, J- January 27th to now, we're like eight and ten. So like a ride right around that 500. So you're thinking that, you know, on this West Coast trip, it's the same thing. I don't I don't necessarily believe that we're just a 500 team. I just think that in this, like, against the Kings, and, like, I granted we haven't played okay. the Pacers fully healthy um, at any point. What was it? We played them. We always played them, like, down somebody. Uh, but I just think, like, that's, that, that, that pace, man, it's just tough to keep up with if you're not fully healthy. Like, we would need Dante to really go like full on 30 point per game that night. We have to have Dante th- shoot 30 or get 30 points with Jalen Brunson shooting 30 as well to keep up with that. Because I'm looking at Malik Monk, who's a good scorer off the bench. I'm looking at DeMontis Sabonis, who's like a mini Jokic to a certain degree, just because of his rebounding, his passing uh, light on the scoring Darren Fox, man, he's just tough to cover because of his speed. I don't know. That's just it's just tough for me to think that the Knicks, not fully healthy, can go keep up with that team because as much as the Knicks like to slow things down and can muddy things up, it's just it's just I don't know, man. I think that team sure. I think it's just a very fast team. I think they're a very fast team. I'm not saying that they're it's not like they're playing the Nuggets where it's like impossible. I just think second. So you're saying the Nuggets is impossible? I'm saying without being fully healthy, yes, it is impossible, CK. Stop what? This. Oh, I don't think it's impossible. You don't think it's impossible? I don't think it's impossible. No. Denver wow. in the regular season, man, I feel like, you know, I, th- I think this Knicks team can, can, can catch them off guard. I think we could. Yeah. With just OG and Brunson. Yeah. yeah. But hold on. You, what, a, what, a, DiVincenzo don't exist? Josh Hart he, triple-double don't exist? You don't think he's going to have a solid game in that game? You don't think you don't think Isaiah Hardenstein can, you know, edge, uh, what's his name? Can, uh, you know, put a little muscle on Jokic and, and, Cause him to have one off night? You don't think so? Come on, man. Jokic. Yeah. Jokic. Yeah. I'm being completely serious right now. I, I think that we can force them to have an off night. I really do think so. Mm. Cut to when we get blown out by 30. But, you know, I really think. No, real, real talk. Real talk <laughs> no, for real. Get I really story. think that we can catch them on an off night. But I am sticking to my gun. I do think that is going to be our only L. But I'm not saying. I don't think they're they're unbeatable. I think that we can, we can get them some trouble. Mm. I'm telling you, I like the defense we got. I really do believe in this defense. I think OG Ananobi just is a, is a spark plug for everybody to play motivated. And even when we didn't have them, we were doing we had some solid defensive nights against some really high octane teams right before OG came back. I mean, yeah, there was other nights where we just couldn't buy a bucket, but we we were still holding some of these teams down. Orlando only scored 74 points. Play the music. Mm-hmm. I mean, they can't shoot the three ball. That's that's. Come on, man. <laughs> Orlando to Orlando to Denver is not the team I was. At. Put him in the what? Come on, CK. At least top. give me somebody. Like, be like, oh, at least we held Boston. Like while we we're down something like that. The point I'm just making is, I feel like our defense is good enough, especially with OG and OB in there. I think that we can catch Denver on an off night. I really think so. I really think so. I think. That we could we can give them a little bit of a worry. I mean, look at them um, the other night against uh, our bo- our boy R.J. Barrett and the Raptors. They struggled a little bit there with them because they took them off. They caught them off guard. If they can do it, I believe we can do it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I don't think they're as unbeatable in the regular season as the rest of the world does. I think Denver they have some holes in the regular season, and I think the Knicks can take advantage, knowing. 
that we need to win these games going into the playoffs. I think the Knicks will will, will catch them off guard. I hope but you're right, man. I'm sticking to my guns that that might be our only L, but I don't think it's going to be a blowout or it's going to it's going to be an easy win for Denver. That's all I'm saying. Okay. That's all I'm saying. All right. I'm sorry. All right. All right. I'm just pushing back a little bit he on the game. going three and one. We're blowing out everybody in this in this West Coast trip, as according to him. We're beating everybody by oh 30 points. God. Oh <laughs> my God. No, I'm just saying. I, I'm done with it. Look, I, I look the Knicks, I feel like we can give them a little shock to their system. Shout out to Static Shock. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's a okay. lot of CKs going on over there. There's the a screen. lot of CKs because, going you know, on over there. All of us are we all all of us are just saying, you know, we're just saying. <laughs> We lost the 76ers, the 79ers, excuse me, without Embiid and Maxi. Okay. And what happened in the following night? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Uh oh. Yeah, I don't know if it's me this time or if it's Alex. I don't know. I can't hear. If y'all hear me. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. Yeah, I said I was trying to stay quiet enough if it was me. It's Alex this time. Okay. Oh, yeah. What were you saying about my files now? Press saying I'm a clown. CK is a clown. Oh, okay. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> TK is good. I hear you. All right, bet, bet, big bet. All right. Well, while he's figuring it, I'm just gonna keep reading. I'm reading the chat. Just say, look. How about now? Am I back now? Can you hear me? All right, cool. Now I can't hear CK. What's going on here? <laughs> oh, this is a comedy of a show. CK, I have no idea what's going on. CP is finessing this audio, man. CP has done something. I blame him because we went. Uh, I blame CP. CP has now messed the audio. I can hear you. Now. CK, you back? I can hear you now. Can you hear me? I can hear you. We okay. we're, we're back. We're back. We're back. Everything's good. I, I, at this point, we got <laughs> CP out of nowhere with the Kelly. <laughs> Oh my gosh, bro. It's my fault. I'll say this is my fault, Alex. I didn't mean to bring you into this. I, it's because I had that old tirade about Boyan Bogdanovich and Burks. It's on me. It's front. on me. I'm sorry. You got to get Put him in the what? Uh, it's okay. Look, uh, you know, I had the heated debate with CP. So look, we're just bringing up old. We're, we're, we're opening old wounds for CP at this point. So we're just cutting audio left and right. CP is pulling the levers from out of nowhere. So look, it is what it is. But hey. I think this is a good place to end it before we keep going in and out of audio, CK. Right. right, right <laughs> as entertaining as this show has been. As entertaining as this show has been. There you have it. CK thinks we're going to go 3 and 1 on this road trip. I'm saying 2 and 2. We had OG return tonight. We had Jalen Brunson doing the damn thing. Josh Hart with the triple double. The New York Knicks defeating the 76ers, holding them to 79 points again, as CK said, the 79ers. 79ers. The 79ers. For, from here on out, they can't do anything against New York. Solid win tonight. 
Shout out to Knicks Nation for tuning in for another KFTV post game live. New York Knicks defeated the 76ers 106 to 79. And you know what, bruv? That's how it goes, bruv. Yeah, bruv. Right? Yeah, bruv. So shout out to Knicks Nation. Thank you all for tuning in. You all know what to do now. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button for your boys. We got 1,400 of you here in the chat right now. At one point, we we're at 2,000, and we appreciate you for all tuning and supporting the movement. Make sure to share this, these videos. Make sure to share the links. Make sure to tell a friend, to tell a friend, to tell a family member, to tell your pets, whatever, to join the channel and to support the movement. All right? Make sure to support our sponsors, Underdog Fantasy. Use that promo code KSTV to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Okay. On top of that, make sure to support our new sponsor, Ginger Hills. Okay. Use that promo code KFTV on your first purchase to get 15% off. And make sure to support Manscaped. Use that promo code KFTV yet again to get 20% off and free shipping. Also, make sure to check out KnicksFanTV.com. Support the writers over there. We got great content over there as well. They do a phenomenal job. Okay. So keep supporting the channel. And look, you can go check out the store as well. We got a lot of merch, some new merch. Make sure to check that out too. And hey, we got another super chat. Shout out to King Matthews for the super chat. He said, where's CP when you need him? No, mm. CP's here. CP's oh. messing with everything right oh. now. Don't yeah. be fooled. Don't be fooled by the audio cutting in and out. We went crazy on Burks, apparently, and CP had enough. All right. So he just had to oh. cut the audio between me and CK. Yeah. He's been here. He's been doing the, he's been doing stuff behind the scenes that we don't even know about. All right. So don't 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 worry. But salute to our Knicks Nation once again for tuning in. Shout out to all the franchise channel members. <laughs> JJ, Ace Ali, Quentin Gilliam. Shout out to you. Uh Mill, shout out to you as well. Brew Crew Fishing, shout out to you. Shout out to Do Things as well. Shout out to Lopez 104. All right. And shout out to all the regulars. Jay from Puerto Rico. JJ, I see you in here as well. Shout out to Christopher Blake. All right. Shout out to Junior Caroma. Shout out to John Talento. Shout out to King Matthews as well. Shout out to Edwin. Shout out to all you for tuning in, man. Shout out to Two Lifted. We appreciate all you. JJ, Queen. I don't know if I said you shout out to JJ as well. What was that, CK? I was saying shout out to Queens, the Jamaica Queens with the salute. Shout out to Jamaica Queens. Yeah, there he is. Shout out to Jamaica Queens. Shout out to Ari from Taiwan as well, man. Shout out yeah. to all you guys. Appreciate all you for always tapping in. And guess what? You can catch us for post game against the Blazers on Thursday. That's it for us. Shout out to all the mods as well. Appreciate everything that you guys have done tonight. Shout out to our producers, Gamba, Tyler. Shout out to TM. Shout out to Daniel. We appreciate all you guys. All right. Put them in the trunk. We out before the audio's out. Put them in the what? Put them in the trunk.